You never knew what you were going to face. You were with a bunch of women that could handle anything. This whole concept of having women was rather taboo to this local area. The society here heavily depends on the men folk and having the jobs. I work with the Helitac, and that's part of the air operations department. We did have a helicopter go down, and we had two fatalities, the pilot and one of our crew members. The wildfires in the west, at least 30 major wildfires are burning, including a 6,000-acre fire in Arizona's Fort Apache Reservation. There's no way you can stop that fire, because it was really running like crazy. The wind was so strong, I don't know how many miles per hour it was. It just went down, and our vehicles shook. We ran into a couple of crews from Montana, and they go, man, we hear a lot of stuff about how just nothing but ladies can outwork some of these men. And we're like, yeah, pretty much can. We bypassed everybody on that crew, up that mountain, down, back up. And then when we got there, everybody was asking, who are you, who are you? And we're like, why Mountain Apache, Apache 8? Thank you very much. Encouraging reports tonight from the Western Wildfire Zone. Firefighters say they are gaining ground on the giant Sholo fire in Arizona, thanks in part to a remarkable team of firefighters. A phone call in the middle of the night is routine for 51-year-old Cheryl Bones. Since 1976, Bones has been crew boss for Apache Number no. 8, and that means travel, often for weeks at a time. 21 days without a break, 90 hours a week on the line. They have a reputation for killing the toughest of fire. By reservation standards, where jobs are scarce, the pay is good. We went out that we left our families behind. I had three kids that I left behind, five, two, and one years old when I started. That was pretty tough. Chipri, NBC News, Sholo, Arizona. You never knew what you were going to face. You were with a bunch of women that could handle anything. My people respect me because I'm putting my life on the line to protect what, what is ours, the beauty of the reservation. When they first started, uh, they were probably the only women's, all women's crew, firefighting crew that was out there. This all male firefighting camp would be becoming organized, the camp setting up. Then all of a sudden, there's these ladies that come into camp and everybody's wondering exactly what's going on here. All heads would turn. We ran into a couple of crews from Montana, and they go, man, we hear a lot of stuff about how just nothing but ladies can outwork some of these men. And we're like, yeah, pretty much can. Their original title was Apache Six. In 74, 75, they were looking for dependable individuals, and they found out that the women were very dependable over the men crews that they had. The gentleman who thought about pulling together a woman's firefighting crew he went ahead and took that thought over to the tribal council. It was an uphill battle. The public was not open to women firefighters. We had to fight for, for the right to fight fires, I mean, as women. Since I was, like, outspoken and really aggressive, <laughs> they made me the Apache 6 crew leader. We did not know if they were going to even issue us the proper equipment. Like, yeah, right, I don't think so, attitude, you know? This whole concept of having women was rather taboo to this local area. The society here heavily depends on the men folk and having the jobs could have really presented a, a potential issue of strife between the men and women. 
but it, it turned out totally different. Um, from what I could tell, um, the women were fully accepted as a firefighting crew. Um, they were basically seg segregated from the men. The men had their own crews and the women had their own crew. They recognize they're out there competing in a man's world. And they actually can come back and say they've outperformed the men.